How did early humans in the Indian subcontinent survive the climate extremes caused by the Toba super eruption and did it alter their migration patterns? Mm, interesting question from more ancient history than we generally think about. So what is this Toba super eruption? Let's go to the map straight away. The first question takes us to the map. Let us go to the map and let's discover what this entire matter is. What is this Toba super eruption? So let's go and search for Toba. Toba. Uh, not Toba Tek Singh, Toba Volcano. Toba Volcano. Where do we find it? It's in Indonesia. It's going to go straight into it. Mount Toba. And well, here it is, I suppose. So as you can see, Mount Toba is located on an island inside a lake. And this lake is called Lake Toba. And if you zoom out, you will see that it is in Sumatra, in Indonesia. So this lake that you see here, it's actually a volcanic crater. And there used to be a gigantic volcano here that erupted with utmost violence about 74,000 years ago. Gigantic, massive volcanic eruption that that caused a volcanic winter on the planet. Huge, massive eruption, similar to um, an asteroid impact event, like not as bad as the Chicxulub impact event, but kind of comparable. Kind of comparable to uh, a nuclear winter, which we would never like to see, but yeah. So this volcano, which existed here, erupted about 74,000 years ago. As you can see, it's not very far from the Indian subcontinent. Not far at all, comparatively speaking. So that's what we're talking about. That's the Toba super volcano eruption. Happened about 74,000 years ago. Now, uh, there are archaeological sites in Andhra Pradesh, in northern India as well, where you can clearly see that there is a layer of ash that is deposited in the in the, archae in, the, in the in the in the sediment layers, and this ha happens exactly seventy four thousand years ago, right? And it's, and what's interesting is that you find signs of human habitation just below the layer of ash and just above the layer of ash, which means that humans were living in these regions in Andhra Pradesh, Valapuram or something it's called, and so, some place in northern India as well. At least two uh, such locations we are aware of. So humans were living just before the ash is deposited and just after the ash is deposited. How do we know humans are living there? Because you see signs of human habitation. You see stone tools and whatever else is associated with human habitation. Which indicates that there were humans just before this massive eruption happened. And the human presence continued right after the, hu the massive eruption. After this deposition of this layer of ash. So clearly unmistakable, incontrovertible evidence that the same humans continued existing before and after this super volcanic eruption. Now, what were the consequences of this eruption? This eruption expelled incredible amounts of ash into the atmosphere of our planet. This was so bad that it, co it caused a volcanic winter, which is that the entire atmosphere was shrouded in smoke and ash for about a decade. Essentially, this means there was no sunlight for a decade. What does that cause? If there's no sunlight, plants die because plants need sunlight for photosynthesis. Plants die out. What happens if plants die out? The animals that eat plants, they die out. What happens if animals that eat plants die out? Animals that hunt other animals who eat plants, those predatory animals die out. Now, what are we, Homo sapiens? We are a mixture of a predator and someone who can subsist on plants. We are omnivores, aren't we? Our ancient ancestors hunted. They also ate plant-based products, you know, whatever it was available. So it obviously would have impacted our ancestors who lived in the subcontinent 74,000 years ago. But they survived. The question is, how did they survive this disaster? Five to ten years of no sunlight, freezing temperatures, it would have been snowing in Sri Lanka. That sort of thing. That sort of horrific climate change. Imagine if it happens today. Imagine the impact it will have. And our ancestors back then, they survived. How did they survive? Um, we're not entirely sure what the mechanics and dynamics were. What we know is that the Indian subcontinent is a massive, massive region. It's extremely fertile, rich in... Uh, everything that you need to sustain life, rivers, 
forests. There used to be forests all over the place, plenty of animals. So our ancestors from that time would have had to adapt and go into emergency survival mode. Uh, this volcanic winter would not have wiped out all life on the planet. Maybe 50% of the species or, or, or vegetation. I'm not sure if species, entire species were wiped out, but the po population levels would have dropped dr drastically by, by maybe 60, 70, 80%, right? So it would have been a time of great scarcity. Uh, if fish survived, they would have survived on fishing. If uh, some other animals survived, they would have survived by uh, hunting those animals. Whatever plant matter would have survived, they would have tried to subsist of that. So essentially, they somehow found a way to stay alive. W one, one thing you can do if something like this happens is you disperse. You disperse over a wider area. Because let's say in the past, let's say uh, 100 square kilometers was enough to sustain a population of 10,000 humans, for example, hypothetically. But now, because of the tremendous scarcity, maybe 10,000 people cannot subsist on a 100 square kilometer area. So you may have to disperse and spread far and wide so that there is less need to compete among each other for survival. So I suppose that that would have caused migrations within the Indian subcontinent. And, and still, the subcontinent was able to s somehow still provide sufficient uh, resources for people who were scattered to survive, to just scrounge a living for a decade or so until the, the, the climate patterns kind of resumed the way they used to be before the volcanic winter. So it would have been a time of great, of great, great uh, difficulty, but they survived. That's what we know. Uh, the archaeological record does not tell us what were the means of survival. What did they eat at the time? How did they disperse to what parts of India they disperse and so on but they did survive and that's the only way you can survive that's by somehow whatever food resources are available you kind of make do with that maybe you shelter inside caves if it is too cold if there's a lot of you know dead trees and all you use the, the wood from the dead trees to to burn to to burn fire so that you you don't freeze to death in those freezing conditions so our ancestors were extremely resourceful in which the, and that's the reason why we we're still, still around over here that's what happened it was a disastrous event and it would have caused uh, catastrophic population declines human population declines globally but in the subcontinent which was a much richer area than other parts of the world it was easier comparatively speaking to survive such a disastrous event and that's how our ancestors managed to survive and once that that period of about 10 years or so was over things started coming back to normal this would have impacted climate cycles for probably several decades maybe a couple of centuries possibly it would have taken maybe two three centuries for for the climate cycles to come back absolutely to the way they used to be before the super volcano eruption but after you survive the first five to ten years and you're still alive things are going to be much better for you so it's about somehow surviving, surviving that time period. And of course, we humans are survivors. We have survived all kinds of disasters in the past. And this is one of a pr the prime examples of such a disaster. So, yeah, that's how our ancestors survived. And that's why we are here today. Uh, how did it affect their migration patterns? We, we're not sure how, how it, in what way it would have affected the migration patterns, but it would have caused populations to disperse far and wide within the subcontinent itself. And eventually, we know that um, the subcontinent, subcontinent was the first place where you had the proper human settlement after the out of Africa migration because it was so rich um, in all kinds of resources. And it would have eventually caused, you know, more migrations beyond the subcontinent. Maybe this was one of the triggers, this event, the super volcano, um, new volcanic winter may, may have been a trigger for multiple migrations, uh, perhaps even out of the subcontinent eventually.